Welcome to Holy Heartbeats. My name is Nathan, and I narrate Christ-centered testimonies from all over the world. These testimonies include rapture and end times visions, near-death experiences, encounters with angels and demons, God, Jesus, and even Satan himself. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you are fond of listening to these types of stories, and let me know what you think about these testimonies in the comment section below. Furthermore, for those who want to share their personal testimonies, visions, and revelations from God, you can send us your own stories at holyheartbeat7 at gmail.com. I will be very honored to read your testimony which may inspire, edify, and encourage a lot of people in their personal journey of faith with the Lord Jesus Christ. Just a gentle warning. Testimonies presented in my channel may be difficult to accept and or upsetting to some people, so viewer discretion is strongly advised. Furthermore, I strongly advise that you take people's stories and accounts with a grain of salt and cross-reference their claims with the teachings of the Holy Bible. Let's get started. Hi everyone. We will be sharing several extraordinary testimonies for today's video. To everyone who is interested to share their own unique stories, you are very welcome to submit an audio or a video testimony instead of a written one, if you prefer it that way. Let's get started. What you're about to hear you have never heard before. I think maybe two other people have had a similar experience but this is not a dream. This is not a vision. Hey everyone. My name is John Lopez and I have a truly remarkable and profound experience to share with you. It's not something that happened in a dream or a vision, but an actual encounter with Jesus Christ and a journey to hell when I was 24 years old. Picture this. I was sitting on my couch and all of a sudden the room became still and quiet. And then, out of nowhere, Jesus Christ walked right through my door as if he could create matter effortlessly. He didn't even need to open the door. His face was shining brightly, like the sun, and in that moment, I knew deep in my spirit that it was Jesus Christ himself. He called me son, which held a lot of meaning. This wasn't some imaginary experience. It was real and tangible. Together, Jesus and I traveled through the layers of the earth, and I saw something that shook me to my core. In the center, there was a pit, and it was filled with people from my own church who were in hell. It's important for me to share this with you, regardless of your background or knowledge. You see, I used to be a Calvinist, and even taught Greek at Everlasting Chip Ministries. But as I studied Greek, I realized it contradicted Calvinism. Unfortunately, some people twisted the scriptures to fit their beliefs, ignoring the context. It was a valuable lesson in not distorting the truth. In hell, I encountered people who had believed in the false idea of eternal security, and now they were questioning why they had been deceived. The torment in hell is eternal, with no chance of escape or relief. Every voice, curse, cheer, and torment is heard and understood, piercing deep into your heart and spirit. It's a state of perpetual awareness, where denial simply isn't possible. During this visitation, I found myself in a tomb, and the Lord warned me that if I continued preaching the false gospel I once believed, this would be my punishment. Inside the tomb, I saw disturbing images, like spiders, monkeys, and rats. I heard billions of voices, each affecting me profoundly. When you're outside of your physical body, your mind can process and comprehend more than your physical senses allow. The sheer magnitude of insults, condemnation, lies and mental torment was overwhelming. But here's the good news. There is still hope for repentance even until the very end. It's not an easy journey, though. Despite knowing that Greek and Hebrew refuted Calvinism, I held on to those beliefs. I understand now the danger of searing one's conscience and rejecting the truth. Those who refuse to accept supernatural intervention and sear their consciences will never reach heaven. Hell isn't a place of literal fire, 
it's a place of darkness. The absence of light is the most agonizing form of torment. God, who is light, isn't present in hell. It's complete darkness, combined with the excruciating pain of being burned alive. It's an indescribable claustrophobic experience with no chance of escape, repentance, or change. Demons constantly torment, curse, and deceive. The torment in hell is the consequence of being a liar, a backslider, a lukewarm Christian, or a false prophet who knowingly distorts the truth. If you find yourself believing in Calvinism or holding on to a lukewarm or backslidden state, I urge you to turn away from those beliefs. When Christ returns in all his glory, there will be nowhere to hide. It's time to repent, to seek God continually, and to distance ourselves from sin. Let's run towards God and abandon the false doctrines that lead to eternal damnation. Our next testimony is from Kay Lynn Trimble, a former member of the Mormon Church who died, experienced the horrors of hell, and came back to tell her extraordinary story. The world's largest cult, and I had started reading the Bible because my neighbor, who was a Baptist, had given me a good news for modern man New Testament. After experiencing being sucked down into hell and seeing millions of people in that pit, she encountered Jesus Christ who said to her, Seek Jesus Christ in the cross. Leave the Mormon church or the hell you witnessed will be your eternal destination. Dear brothers and sisters, it's a testimony that may save you from an eternity in hell, especially if you're a Mormon or have friends who are Mormons. There have been countless testimonies and books about near-death experiences and life after death, and Kaylin Trimble will also talk about her own experience. My dear brothers and sisters, I found myself teetering on the brink of death after a medical mishap. Being involved in one of the world's largest cults, my life had been shaped by distorted beliefs. However, everything changed when I picked up the Bible for the first time in my 16 years of marriage. It was a profound encounter with the Word of God, a revelation that had eluded me for so long. In that moment, I was engulfed in confusion and despair, not knowing who God truly was, or even understanding my own identity. It was a time of desperation and anger directed towards God. When my husband discovered me hemorrhaging, he immediately rushed me to the hospital. But even within the sterile walls of the medical facility, complications arose. The bleeding was relentless, and during surgery, my body struggled to contain it. The anesthesia plunged me into a deep sleep, and I failed to awaken as expected in the recovery room. The situation grew critical, and my life hung in the balance. Then, in the midst of this dire circumstance, something extraordinary occurred. My spirit detached from my physical body, and I found myself being inexorably drawn into the depths of hell. The experience was nothing short of horrifying. Demonic entities tormented and screamed at the souls trapped in that dreadful place. <laughs> the air was thick with darkness, flames licked at the surroundings, and the intense heat was suffocating. Fear and confusion overwhelmed me as I struggled to comprehend the horrors unfolding before me. After what seemed like an eternity, my physician, a spirit-filled Christian, entered the room. In a moment orchestrated by the Holy Spirit, he was prompted to administer medication that would save my physical life. Miraculously, my spirit returned to my body, and I sat up, declaring that I had returned from the brink of death. It was a profound realization that God had a purpose for my life, a purpose that had been preserved through this divine intervention. From that moment onward, my journey to discover the true and living Jesus Christ began. Throughout the night, my spirit would intermittently leave my body, and I would find myself once again in the depths of hell. The torment and darkness intensified with each departure as I bore witness to the screams and cries of those trapped in eternal agony. Amidst this terrifying ordeal, a glimmer of hope emerged. I caught sight of a minuscule pinpoint of light. It was the voice of a dear friend who had passed away, cautioning me against repeating the mistakes he had made. His words ignited a spark of hope within me. With every ounce of strength I possessed, I ran towards that flickering light. To my amazement, it transformed into a magnificent tunnel of radiant brilliance. The tunnel led me to a sight that took my breath away a burning gold cross bathed in resplendent glory. Standing before the cross was Jesus Christ himself, 
emanating power and majesty. Overwhelmed by his presence, I fell prostrate, crying out for forgiveness. Jesus spoke to me, urging me to seek him and the cross, and to leave behind the confines of the Mormon church. It was a moment of profound repentance and surrender, as I embraced the truth and turned my back on false teachings. In that incredible moment, I felt something truly extraordinary, the deep, boundless forgiveness and love of Jesus Christ washing over me. It was like nothing I'd ever experienced before. Suddenly, Jesus wasn't just a distant historical figure to me anymore. He was real, alive, and right there with me. His grace and mercy transformed me in ways I can't even begin to describe. That encounter marked the start of a whole new chapter in my life. I felt like I was setting out on a journey, guided by the light of Jesus Christ and fueled by faith. It was like everything had changed in an instant. And you know, this story reminds me of something important, the absolute importance of seeking out Jesus Christ and fully embracing his sacrifice on the cross. It's a powerful reminder to let go of anything that isn't in line with his truth and to embrace him wholeheartedly. Because in Jesus we find not just salvation, but purpose, meaning, and a love that never fades. He's the key to everything, including everlasting life and freedom from the grip of death. About three years ago, I died and went to hell. How I died was I had a heart attack and I was down there because I... About three years ago, I had a heart attack and died, leading me to go to hell. At that time, I didn't have Jesus Christ as my savior and I used to mock Christians, the Bible and Jesus. I dressed in all black and lived in a state of depression, anger, and hatred. This may be hard to believe, but I want to share my experience with you to make you aware that hell is a real and terrible place of torment. There are no parties or joy in hell. It is a constant nightmare. Let me summarize the story for you. Before becoming a Christian, I was in a deep depression, filled with hopelessness, anger, and hatred towards the world and everyone around me. I even contemplated suicide but was too afraid to go through with it. I despised myself and those around me, trapped in a dark place. One night, as I collapsed in despair, I felt an intense pain in my chest, as if my heart had stopped. Suddenly I found myself in a pitch black place, feeling an overwhelming coldness and numbness. I was paralyzed with fear, as hell is a place of constant fear and torment, as described in the Bible. I could hear a creature, likely a demon, screaming profanities in a demonic language, and I also heard a mocking laughter that I later learned was Satan's laughter. Desperate to escape, I resorted to self-harm, trying to claw and punch my soul's face. It was a state of deep depression and despair worse than anything I had ever experienced. Hell is indescribably horrible, amplifying the worst emotions you have ever felt in your life by a thousand. It is an eternal place of torment, where the soul either goes to heaven or hell. In my darkest moment, I cried out for help, screaming Jesus with all my might. In that instant, a beam of white, holy light appeared, and Jesus himself stood before me, wearing a long, glowing white robe. I felt a mix of guilt, happiness, and surprise, looking away and feeling unworthy in his presence. Without saying a word, Jesus grabbed me and swiftly took me out of hell, just as quickly as he had appeared. This experience aligns with the biblical story of Jonah, who was swallowed by a whale, went to hell, and cried out to the Lord for help, who then saved him. My advice to all of you is to never go to hell. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Although being a Christian may come with hardships, this earthly life is fleeting compared to eternity. Trust Jesus Christ as your Savior by inviting him into your life through a heartfelt prayer. If you pray sincerely and from your heart, you will be born again, feeling the presence of Jesus and the forgiveness of your sins. Remember Jesus said in the Bible that unless a person is born again, they cannot enter the kingdom of God. So, please pray this prayer sincerely and slowly, and you will experience the presence of Jesus. Give thanks to him, as he wanted me to share this message with you to make you aware of the reality of hell. Trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, for he died on the cross for our sins, rose from the dead, and conquered death. By accepting him, you will not face the sting of death. Judgment day is approaching, but you can settle it out of court with Jesus Christ. Trust him and be blessed.
Good morning, my name is William Borna. I've been holding this testimony since July of 2000. When I flatlined, I died of a heart attack. Good morning, my name is William Boronat. I've been holding on to this testimony since July of 2000 when I had a heart attack and died. I want to share my story about going to hell and being tortured. I've kept this testimony to myself for 16 and a half years because it's not something I really wanted to talk about. When I was 15 years old, all I cared about was partying and being with women. I was focused on how many women I could sleep with and how much partying I could do. I grew up in Miami in the early 80s when money was abundant. But when the money dried up, I realized it was time to find a job. I searched from place to place, but I could never find one. Something in my heart was telling me to get on my knees and pray to God, even though I didn't know how to do it or who Jesus was. I would walk into a church and ask if I could pray to God for a job. With the little belief I had, I would get on my knees and pray. Miraculously, within two or three days, I would find a job. I would look up at the sky and say thank you. But then I would go on with my life without seeking a relationship with God because I didn't really know Him. Years passed, and I would either quit my job or get fired, and the cycle of searching for a new job would begin again. But I knew the secret. I would go to the nearest church, regardless of the denomination, and ask God for a job. And just like before, within two or three days, I would find another job. But during that whole time, my main focus was on partying and women. I didn't pay much attention to the little voice that was trying to talk to me, which I now know was God. He would say, Son, I need you to work for me. But I didn't fully understand who God was, or even know that his son's name was Jesus. I would tell God that I respected him and acknowledged his existence because every time I asked him for a job, he would provide one. But I would also tell him that I wanted to continue enjoying my life of partying and women in South Beach. I wanted to keep my life separate from him. In 1996, I asked God for a job again. It was the third time I had gone back to a church to ask for his help. He answered my prayer and provided me with a job within three days, just like before. From 1996 to 2000, I kept hearing that voice telling me to come work for God. But I kept giving him the same response, asking him to let me stay on the left side, where I could enjoy South Beach, partying, and being with women. In the year 2000, I had a heart attack and died. As I kneel here in my prayer room, I feel compelled to share my experience with God. This room is where I spend time on my knees daily, seeking wisdom and fearing the Lord. When I flatlined, my body fell to the ground lifeless. I want to explain what happened next, as I believe it is important to understand the different aspects of our being. We have a spirit, a soul, and a body. When our body dies, our spirit lives on. As my body lay on the floor, I remember being grabbed by little black moles. They were pulling me down while my spirit and soul were awakened, feeling pain. They tortured me, sticking their fingers in my eyes, nose, and biting my ears. They gouged me, spat on me, and cursed me. I couldn't cry out or express my pain externally, but internally I was crying. I had never known God or Jesus, but I found myself in a place with a drop-off point. It was like looking down from the second floor of a building, and as far as my eyes could see, there was an ocean of people screaming and crying. All I could hear were desperate pleas to be rescued from that place. I had never known what a pastor was or what jihad meant. My vocabulary didn't include those terms. However, I believed in the existence of God. The gates of hell, as mentioned in the book of Revelation, opened, and those tormenting creatures were about to push me into the pit. But before they could, I had a brief moment to look down. In that moment, I saw a section filled with pastors who kept saying, I'm sorry, I took the money. The screams of the people were overwhelming, but my focus was on the pain of my own torture. Just as I used to cry out for a job, I cried out to God, asking him to kill me so that I wouldn't suffer like the others. But something remarkable happened. From behind me, a bright light started to emerge. It illuminated everything, and the screams of the people intensified. Then, a thundering voice shook hell, saying, You need help. At that very moment, I was gone from there. The Lord put me back into my body, which was airborne, and then threw me against the wall where my bed was. I woke up the next morning, 
not even daring to look at myself in the mirror. All I could remember was the torment of hell. With no knowledge of pastors or their role, I immediately sought help. I called for assistance, asking if there was an Alcoholics Anonymous or drug meeting available. I found one in Coral Gables, Florida, at a school. I attended the meeting, still shaken by my experience in hell. In July of 2000, I attended my first meeting at 9 o'clock. I sat there silently, not engaging with anyone or paying attention to what was being said. I felt like a zombie, disconnected from everything around me. At one point, a man tapped me on the shoulder and told me it was time to go. Confused, I replied that I had just arrived. He informed me that I had been there since 9 o'clock in the morning and that it was now 10 o'clock at night. I had sat through multiple meetings without even realizing it. The help I sought was real because I had experienced torture in hell. Despite this, I still ran from God upon returning to life. However, I had a burning desire to understand who God was. I approached a co-worker, someone I used to mock and call a Bible bagger, and shared with him what had happened to me. I wanted to know why God had saved my life. I had no idea that it was because he loved me deeply. I couldn't comprehend that God's love for me was the reason behind my rescue. The co-worker responded by saying that my past drug and alcohol abuse were the reasons for my suffering. I had mocked and tormented him before, so I didn't blame him for his response. Despite this setback, I continued my search for answers. I decided to go to a Catholic church and entered a confession booth, hoping that confessing my sins would bring me closer to understanding why God had saved me. Overwhelmed with emotion, I couldn't stop crying. The priest in the booth asked me to come back later as there was a long line waiting. Although it may sound harsh, it made sense because I couldn't control my tears. I cried incessantly for two weeks, both at work and at home. People avoided me, not knowing how to approach someone who seemed so broken. Since the year 2000, when I surrendered my life to Jesus, I have been working for the Lord Jesus Christ. For seven years I served as his vessel, helping to plant five churches and establish a school. However, during that time, someone wronged me, and I became tired and backslid, walking away from God for seven years. In my absence, I returned to my old ways, engaging in worldly pleasures and partying, picking up where I had left off. I returned to God with a simple prayer, asking Him to take away the pills I was dependent on and the perverted thoughts I had towards women. Amazingly, God answered my prayer and delivered me from those struggles. Little did I know that He had more in store for me. He asked me to come back and work for Him. He expressed His love for me by sparing my life and giving me another chance. Now, I want to address the pastors out there. There are many good pastors who faithfully preach the Word of God, but for those who run churches for money or misuse church funds, it is not worth it. I have witnessed firsthand the torment of those who suffer because of such actions. To those who may be hesitant to attend church due to these concerns, I urge you to remember that your relationship with Jesus is what truly matters. Don't hold back from following Him because of the actions of a few. God is real, and the devil will not bother you if you are living in sin. But the moment you humble yourself before God and ask for His help, everything changes. I want to share something significant with you. This drawing represents the pit I was about to be thrown into. It is a real and terrifying place. Good people can end up in hell simply because they did not accept Jesus as their Savior. Bad people can go to heaven because they have accepted Him. Every day I spend time on my knees, fearing God and seeking His wisdom. I study the Word of God diligently, aiming for at least two hours a day, although I must confess that I often spend five to six hours immersed in His Word. You cannot truly know who God is unless you open the Bible and seek Him. God is real, and He loves you. All He asks is for you to acknowledge your sins and ask for forgiveness. Receive Jesus as your Savior and find a good church. I'll be honest with you, it may take some time to find the right one. Many churches nowadays preach a watered-down version of Jesus and are more concerned with filling seats than with true spiritual growth. Open your Bible and start reading the New Testament beginning with the book of John. Get on your knees, receive Jesus, and invite the Holy Spirit to be your teacher. Spend time in front of the Bible, asking the Holy Spirit to guide you. He will teach you better than any preacher. You will fall in love with the Bible, and in doing so you will find the beginning of wisdom, which is the fear of the Lord.
So let us humble ourselves before God and say, Father God, I know you are real. Forgive me for my sins and have mercy on my soul. He is an awesome God, and I love him. My name is William Boronat, and I'm sharing my first and last name with you. If you ever need to talk to me or require prayer, you can reach me at 305-407-6464. However, I want to make it clear that if you intend to call me to mock or make fun of me, please reconsider. Remember that what you sow, you will reap. Don't play with God or mock him as it is not directed towards me, but towards God himself. This testimony is about God and your life. It is also about the reality of hell. God is the author of this incredible story that you are hearing. I want you to know that I love you, and more importantly, God loves you. Dear friends, thank you for listening and I hope these testimonies have blessed you and edified you in some way. Before I end this video, I want to ask you two questions that people usually ask Christians concerning hell. First question is, how can an eternal punishment in hell be morally justifiable for finite human actions committed during a limited lifespan? This question challenges the concept of infinite punishment for finite sins. The second question is, if God is all loving and desires the salvation of all people, how can one reconcile the existence of hell as a place of eternal suffering and separation from God? It invites us Christians to delve into the complexities of God's nature, free will, and the role of human choice in accepting or rejecting God's love, while addressing the implications of eternal suffering. As it is written in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, Preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage, with great patience and careful instruction. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, and I'll see you in our next video.